So, today we got the third book of D the Keeper of the Lost City series. Hello fellow plot questers, it is I, Aaron the Plot Quester, and today we got Keeper of the Lost Cities Everblaze by Shannon Messenger. Her, him, or her saline on themselves. And well, let's get right into it. So, Sophie, as as we have seen in the last um, book, can heal minds, which is really, really cool. However, since it is a very powerful ability, the council decides they need restrictions on it and that they are the ones who decide who can be healed. And they decided that Fintan, the pyrokinetic, who is probably responsible for training the pyrokinetic that tortured Sophie and Dex in the first book, is healed, so that they can ask him more questions. Now, before they do that, Sophie visit Bront, Grady and Adeline's fiancé. And this is the anniversary of Jocelyn's death. Therefore, they want to visit uh, the heartbroken, mentally destroyed Bronte. Bront. Bront, something about him is weird. He's talentless, and he's scared of flames, and something's just wrong with him in general. It seems like he's a lunatic. Meanwhile, people are growing more and more distrustful of her. After all, she has a special ability, and the elves have never seen this kind of conflict before and the elven society is in complete chaos. Dex, Fitz, Keith, and Biana are all on her side. However, the rest of the school and the rest of the society thinks of Sophie as evil and outcast. Meanwhile, while they were checking on Sylvany, who is doing well at the sanctuary, by the way, they find out that Sylvany's tail has been infected with a kind of orc technology. And this technology allows the orcs to home on Sylvany and shoot him. Which is, you know, bad considering they want to repopulate Alicorns and there's only two of them left, male and female. Things are really being bad. And then finally, the fateful day comes and the healing of Fintan occurs. Sophie, uh, and Sophie, with Fitz as, his guide, as her guide, goes into Fintan's mind and tries to bring him back. And the council is with them. And they are aware of the dangers. However, they did not realize how severe these dangers were. Fintan brings down Everblaze onto them, killing Kendrick, and sets the city, the Emeraldilda, the, the capital city of the elves, with never-ending flames. And Sophie manages to help, and manages to help get the frames, flames down, however the damage has been done. Kendrick is dead. And the council goes against Sophie. At Kendrick's funeral, the orc, the org king, comes forward, and no one trusts him. And Sophie, not trusting him, tries to go inside the org's mind and gets immediately noticed. And the org tries to kill Sophie, and we almost, almost sparked a civil war on everyone. However, thankfully, they didn't, and Sophie is saved, and the council says they will decide her punishment later. Meanwhile, Dex is creating some sort of device for the council that restricts abilities, which is, after all, kind of pretty cool. They could use it for criminals. Then, after, afterwards, they, they meet the Black Swan, and they request a meeting with the Black Swan, and they meet the Black Swan. And the Black Swan says things are getting pretty dangerous, but they really, really want to use, use Sophie and everyone as a bait, in order to catch the Never Seen, which is, the, which is what their enemies are called, and try to take them down and capture some of their members. However, the council finds out about this, and they give Sophie the ultimate punishment. They are restricting her abilities using the device that Dex has made. Of course, Dex is surrounded by extreme guilt, and he didn't know that this was going to happen, and he immediately wants to take it off Sophie. However, Sophie refuses, knowing that the council would banish Dex if they don't. And therefore, due to Kenrick's death, the council has gone completely cuckoo. Sigh. And the, she only has four supporters on the council. Councilor Rally, Councilor... Councilor... Wait. I you not get Councillor O'Reilly, the, ca the counselor who uh, teaches inflicting, and Councillor Tarragon. And these are the only members that are supporting her. 
which is really, really bad because they all apparently hate her. And then, and then, the black swan is being trapped. And she doesn't know this until she puts some things together while she's pretty much under house arrest. She goes around and she's really depressed and she's trying to find clues that Josie would might have left them. And she finds out that Josie is defending someone, the leader of the Never Seen, or perhaps one of the core members. And she realizes, wait, is Brant really, really, really talented to us? Or is he, does he have a talent? Except it's forbidden and unknown. The talent of a pyrokinetic. And Sophie realizes what's going on and tells Grady. And Grady, the only mesmer in the elven world, is angry. Beyond angry. And together they go to interrogate him and makes him burn off his hand. And we are all in a really, really, really bad situation where Bron says, Ha! That little trap the Black Swan is setting? Well, we're reverse Uno Wing, and that's our trap now, and we're gonna get the Black Swan and your friends. And Sophie immediately goes, Oh no, and manages to do a deal with Bron, where she, Bron lets, him, lets her go, and she lets Bron go, and they immediately go and warn each other's teams. And Sophie manages to arrive just in time to warn everyone and have a bloody battle, and afterwards they all manage to survive, but barely. Meanwhile, the council, after the conflict, are going against the Black Swan. They're going after the wrong group, by the way, and they immediately want to give big, big, big punishments to everyone involved. And Sophie will be sent to Exilium, the school meant for the hopeless. And everyone immediately goes, nope, we gotta get out of here. And Alden, alongside with every adult that's on their team, they say, okay, you guys need to get out, you guys need to go to the Black Swan, because the council has gone nuts, and what they did to you was wrong. So we need to follow our moral compasses, and you guys need to get out. And so finally, they nod, they could say okay, and they are getting ready to leave for the Black Swan. And that is the end of this book. Plays. And the next book is going to be about their adventures with the Black Swan, which would be pretty cool considering the Black Swans being super, super mysterious. One thing that I really think the book did really well is make me super frustrated by the injustice. You know, like in Harry Potter, like Umbridge being super unjust to Harry, like I shall not tell lies over and over again. It sort of reminds me of that, except like restricting someone's talent. That's like restricting our arms and legs, something that we're naturally meant to do just because of something that is out of our control. And I think the council has really gone nuts with everything, and they really don't trust Sophie Foster anymore. And that feeling of injustice and frustration really got to me through the book, which just shows how well written it is, which is why, again, I'm recommending this entire series to you guys over and over again. And like I said, it is great, but really makes you feel frustrated, really makes you feel those emotions, and it's very hard-hitting. It was the darkest book all of all of them, all of them, and the plot twist about Brand, I sort of expected it when they say, okay, he's talentless, but it's sort of sus, you know. He he's being he has a raspy voice, which Sophie has encountered in book one. Brand was the one who tortured her, and we kind of we kind of start to think, hey, it's kind of weird, and yeah, all of those things. And I feel like the author definitely put in breadcrumbs, and if you put it together, props on you. And it's such a great book, highly recommend it. And like always, your plot quest around the plot quest, you're definitely, definitely you should read if you can. And goodbye. Everblade.